number of New Zealanders are dying from mostly preventable illness. Our next guest, Jason Sean Bennett, is living proof of the benefits simple changes to your lifestyle can make. Good morning to you. It's lovely to have you in the studio. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, you have been researching health and wellness for over 30 years now, haven't you? Indeed. But let me. So you're a 51-year-old grandfather. I'm indeed so proud. <laughs> wow. And you describe yourself as the healthiest you've ever been. Was there an aha moment or was it a gradual change? What happened? Uh, no, it was definitely, it started when I was very young, going right back to when I was born. My, uh, my mum had toxemia when I was in the womb. Oh, so I was born a little two pound nine bubba. Wow. Very lucky to be alive. Yeah. yeah. I was in hospital for six weeks with tubes, with, um, with all kinds of illness and medication. I ended up on 16 shots of Ventolin a day for about 20 years. Intel prevention, drugs, steroid injections where they'd miss the veins and being helicoptered into hospital with breathing apparatus. I was really sick yeah. about the first 20 years of my life and I was consistently told it was genetic and it's just bad luck. Take the drugs, you're always going to be unwell. You'll be an asthmatic with hay fever, allergies, colds, digestive this issues. This is your lot. Your whole lot. Yeah. This is your lot, yeah. And um, so I got to age 20 and I decided that uh, one day I had an epiphany, so in terms of your question, uh, and it was, well, what if I actually changed what I did? And this was back in the 1980s. So this is a long to many decades ago. There was no internet, you know, so I actually literally... How could you Google to, things? What yeah, did you yeah, do? Yeah, there, there was no internet. There was nothing. So I had to import books from America and read, and I experimented on myself, and I changed my diet and gave up the meat and the alcohol, and, you know, I even drunk for 32 years, and, and, and all the rubbish foods, and just started again and rebuilt my gut health. And, and uh, it took about five years, and I cured my asthma, my hay fever, allergies, flus. I haven't had a cold or a flu for 25 years. I haven't had a sick day for really? 25 years. Yeah, really. People, and what happened was I was so irritatingly healthy that people around me started saying, can you either write this stuff down or just leave me alone? You know, it was, it was a case of literally people saying, and I didn't think I had anything to say particularly. I was only doing it for my own health and my kids and my granddaughter yeah. and, you know, and, uh, and then I started writing and then there were bestsellers. And so how many books now? Three, the third book, yeah. Three books, Feel so great. your last one, yeah. this one is just new out, isn't it? Feel great yes. and live longer. This yes, one. that's it. Brandy. Right here which yep. is a handbook, for New, a handbook for New Zealand exceptional health, which yeah. is what we all need. So in this book, you say you have to walk every day or lose the ability to walk. So what's all that about? What are the benefits of walking? Yeah, well, I'm a huge fan of the centenarian cultures, those 10 different cultures around the world where the people live into their 100s yeah. at a rate at about 10 times more than we do. And I'm a huge fan of longevity rather than whatever is the current diet and the current trend and the current superfood and which whatever. Which is changing all the time. Exactly, which is always changing. And I've seen it you know, in the industry over 30 years. And so what I notice when you start to study these longest lived people they all walk all the time and it's the number one exercise when you look at longevity and when you really look at what stops you living it's often when you get a, a fracture or an injury that stops you being able to walk and you start to die so the key exercise for people and it, it, people underestimate the power of walking i walked this morning i walk every day walking is the business if you want longevity. so just get up off the sofa and go for a walk at lunch yeah exactly or just in the walking. evening take the dog for a little bit of a stroll yeah. and it's free it is free, yeah. and it's really nice at this time of year too. Exactly. So is it true that walking increases your brain size? Yeah, well, the interesting dance that happens when you walk is you think, and a lot of people will have that aha moment when they hear that, when often you'll have a problem, like you might be stressed at work or you, you've had a row with your other half, and you, you go for a walk and you're circling around the block, and by the time you've done a couple of laps, you're for feeling the, a lot better. For the you, third time. Yeah, you get creative, you start to think. I listen to music when I walk. I often come up with great ideas when I walk as well. It's a wonderful thing for stimulating the brain. It is great, and yeah. it's good to sometimes remove yourself from, from the house if you just need to get a yes, bit, bit of separation is good. Particularly if you've got yes. lots of children yeah. running around, yeah. all sorts of things. So is it also, uh, this is a quote too, the longer you sit, the fatter you get. Yes. So movement, that's obviously the key Absolutely. to Absolutely. I've been standing while I work for 15 years and it's become a really big thing now. Um, but it's amazing how we are designed. You know, sitting is a reward for standing. It's yeah. not the other way around. We have this whole illusion that, you know, sitting is fine. It's not. We're not designed to sit. We're designed to be moving. And that doesn't mean doing weights and going to the gym and all that stuff all the time. But it just means moving, right. squatting. You know, my, my, my grandma once, who died at 104, phenomenal woman, she once saw me uh, kneeling, uh, squatting down. And she said, if you keep squatting, you'll never get old. And it was a beautiful kind of moment about movement. There you yeah. are. It's not that hard. It's actually quite a nice, a pleasant way to sit, I find, or just to, just to, to rest for a while. It's quite it a bad. Sitting is a reward. It's wonderful and it's really enjoyable yeah. when you've earned it. Although you'll look mm. quite strange if you're at the mall and you're having a little bit of a squat <laughs> mid mall, yeah, yeah. just have a bit of a rest. Mm. So talk to me a little bit about food. I mean, what are the biggest mistakes we make yeah. when it comes to longevity? Well, the first thing is eating too much. Mm. So number one thing is people just eat too much. And, you know, if you put a pile of junk food in front of people these days and you labelled it poison, don't eat it. But it's free. You know what happens? Everyone 
stuffs out, they eat it, they, they take it home, they put it in their, their pockets, you know. Number one is eating too much. So regular days off, I've been regularly fasting on and off for 30 years, I do it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's my first book, Eat Less, Live Long, was about fasting. So number one is eating too much food. Number two is not eating enough plants. Plants are critical because they're the only thing in the world that contains fiber. It's fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. They contain fiber. Fiber runs your entire digestive system, cleans your liver, removes the waste, puts it in your bowel, gives you bowel motions, which is critical because unless you're getting your waste out regularly, mm -hmm. you get sick everywhere else. It was one of the first things I did that cured my illness, was treat my digestive system with respect, and that changed the way my breathing happened. So, yeah, look, fiber eating less and, uh, and regularity and routine. Is what about, critical. what's your take on healthy fats or fats? What should we be eating? Then? Yeah, look, fats are great. You know, good healthy fats are fine. However, get them in plants. It's one of the myths. You know, one of the things that I see with the trends that come and go all the time is that people are adding all this stuff into their diet when actually Mother Nature's amazing. I mean, she generally tends to give us the right food around us at the right time. That's mm. why if you're in Samoa, you'll eat coconut and, and lots of it. If you're in you know, a really cold place, you'll be eating whale blubber, yeah. you know, because that's actually what's in the environment. So eating local is really important as well. We really underestimate that because we can import everything all the time. Mm -hmm. We can eat bananas all winter, but are we designed to eat bananas in winter? Not at all. So I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, um, don't eat the same things all the time. You've really mm. got to mix it up day to day because that's the way animals in the wild eat. They pick from trees, different yeah. trees all over the place. Yeah. Should we do the same? Absolutely, yeah. Eat what's in season. So in the summer, you eat more raw foods, more fresh food. In winter, you know, you cook a bit more. And that's how fermentation started, of course, was there was, there was lots of cabbage left over in, in, in summer. And so they decided, how do we you know, contain all that goodness in the cabbage. And we, so we put it in bottles when there's no fridges and service stations so we can have it in winter. So eating locally and eating in season is critical for longevity. And so can you, actually get, enough, can you get enough nutrients from plants? You can, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I've been uh, vegetarian, vegan on and off for 32 years. You know, my grandmother lived 81 years uh, on nothing but plants in a local garden, 81 years without supplements, without addition, without disease. She died of old age at 104 in her sleep. Two weeks after she said to the family, don't come and see me anymore. I've had a great life. It's probably my time. And she died in her sleep two weeks later. Wow. Well, you're mm. a pretty youthful 51-year-old looking grandfather. That is for sure. Thank you. Absolute pleasure <laughs> chatting with you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Well, this is the book right here, and it is available in bookshops nationwide.